Welcome to Kick Tracking Vids again, and uh, we're gonna go uh, again another part of in case you are asleep or distracted. Uh, this time we're gonna cover from January 12 through January the 19th, 2018. Major events uh, in the world that transpired in the year 2018. Okay, uh, last week we went through a uh, our we covered from January the 1st all the way to the 12th and that's where we're gonna pick it up today okay <clears throat> we're gonna again start with uh, natural events or uh, natural disasters and weather weather phenomena you know the Bible tells us that uh, in scripture it tells us there in the book of Isaiah chapter 29 and a verse 6 it says it says those shall be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder with earthquake with great noise with storm and tempest that's the hurricane and the flame of, of devouring fire and I believe that that is talking about the forest fires and also talking about the volcanoes you know and it, it, it but the, notice that it's all at one time all these events at one time the thunder the earthquake the great noise the storm the tempest the flame of the devouring fire at a one time and, you know god is telling us you know he's giving us a sign you know it's uh let's go back let's go to my notes here and what well uh, pick it up on january the the 12th On January the what? Let's just see. January 10. I think we covered that. Well, here on January the 10th. Well, yeah, here. Jan I don't think we covered this last time. January the 10th. Uh, Oprah, Oprah Winfrey. You know, uh, a lot of people thought she was running for for president, right? That speech that she made, and uh, the thing was that she was also a victim of the mudslides. It says right there that Oprah Winfrey reveals her home is one of those affected by Delhi, California mudslides. Wow. So there was a lot of mudslides going on that time, you know, and, uh, and I'm pretty sure uh, Oprah, you know, she, she, she looked at it as a sign that maybe she, needs to, maybe she needs to take care of her own home before she starts taking care of America, right? You know, uh, <clears throat> you know, but uh, mudslides, you know, are an aftermath of forest fires. And the Bible does talk a lot about forest fires in God's Word. Not only forest fires, but floods. But we, uh, in that area, we've had a, a lot of forest fires. And, and what are the forest fires sign of? Well, I made a video on uh, forest fires, and it's a sign of the coming Antichrist. Let me just go through some verses here, okay? In the book of Isaiah, chapter 21, it says there, there 21, look at verse 10. Well, I mean, Jeremiah, sorry about that, Jeremiah 21. I knew it was wrong. Jeremiah 21, verse 10, right here. Okay. It says, For I have set my face against this city for evil, and not for good, says the Lord. It shall be given into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. You know, when we talk about the king of Babylon, a lot of people think it's talking about Nebuchadnezzar. No, the real king of confusion is Satan, the Antichrist. When he comes as the Antichrist, the real king of Babel, and uh, yes, Nebuchadnezzar was only a type, but it says, and he shall burn it with fire. So forest fires are uh, symbolized uh, when Satan will come as the Antichrist. It says right here in verse 14, it says, but I will punish you according to the fruit of your doing, says the Lord. I will kindle a fire in the forest thereof, and it shall devour all the things round about. 
So far as far as she reminds us of the wrath of Satan or when when God allows him to come uh, and brings about his wrath, Satan's wrath, uh, the tribulation when he comes as the Antichrist. Okay. Uh, another another witness to this is Joel in the book of Joel chapter 2 and it says there in verse 1 it says blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh for it is night at hand a day of darkness and gloomy uh, of gloominess, a day of clouds and a thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mounds of great people. That's the locust army, that's Satan's army, that's his angels, and a strong there has not been ever like, neither shall there be any more after it, even to the years of many gener generations. Notice how there's there's never been the like, because they're not humans, they're supernatural, as it is as you will see there in verse eight. It says a devouring fire. See, it says right there, a devouring fire before them, you know, and behind them, a flame burneth. The land is, is the garden of Eden before them, behind them, a desolate wilderness. Yeah, nothing shall escape. You see, uh, so it's talking about Satan and his, and his locust army. And if you want to prove that they're supernatural, well, right there in verse 8, it tells you, it says right there, neither, it says, neither shall anyone thrust another. They shall walk everyone in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. Okay, they shall not be wounded, okay? Neither shall one thrust another, they shall walk everyone in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. What kind of person will not die if you stab him with a sword? <laughs> a supernatural person. This is talking about fallen angels, okay? All right, let's go back to my to my notes here on uh, what transpired during January the okay the next thing that we have here is uh, Jan on January the 11th eight earthquakes strike along Iran Iraq border rattling Baghdad Wow earthquakes and here in, in January the 14th right here in January the 14th Delhi earthquakes a shake southern Peru a Delhi earthquake Let's see that. Let's see that article there. <clears throat> Daily earthquake shake, shake southern Peru. Wow. And it says here that oh, uh, you know, two people were killed when a 7.1 magnitude earthquake shook Peru on Sunday according to original governor you know does the Bible mention earthquakes in the Bible are there earthquakes mentioned in God's Word well the Bible tells us there in the book of Matthew in chapter Matthew 24 in um, verse let me see here well, well we'll go to Mark let's go to Mark last last week we went to Matthew let's go to Mark now in the book of Mark in chapter 13 and uh, let's look at verse 8 am I, am I in Mark? no I'm in Matthew <laughs> Mark where's Mark at right here? this Mark right there Mark 13 and we'll pick it up around verse 7 and when you shall hear wars and rumors of wars be not troubled for such things must not be but then shall not be yet verse 8 it says, for nation shall rise against nation. That's ethnos. That means race against race. Don't we see that a lot nowadays? Race against race. A lot of, uh, and kingdom against kingdom. It says, and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places. And there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginning of sorrows. Again, like I said last time, the beginning of sorrow means beginning of labor pains. And uh, they're going to get more stronger, more intense, and they're going to escalate, okay, in magnitude and in frequency. Um, okay, so, so let's go back to my notes here. And natural disasters, right? Daily earthquake shakes southern Peru, okay? And the next thing was, 
on January the 15th. They're talking about volcanoes now. It says thousands evacuated as volcano threatens big eruption. It says, uh, nearly 5,000 people have fled from villages around in, in, in the Philippines' most active volcano as lava flowed down its crater Monday in a gentle eruption that scientists warned could turn explosive. So they're thinking that this volcano is, gonna, is going to erupt in the Philippines, right? You know, does does God talk talk about volcanoes? You know, does he does he mention volcanoes in the in the word? Well, yeah, of course he does. Let me let me go down there to uh, to God's word here in the book of uh, oh, Psalms ninety seven and verse five. Psalm ninety seven and verse five says. It said, Psalm 97, verse 5. He tells, he, he, the hills melted like wax at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth, right? Yep. Okay, now let's go to the book of uh, Psalms 104. Psalm 104 and verse, verse 32. He looketh on the earth, and it trembleth. He touches the hills, and they smoke. Wow. Okay. Uh, Psalms 144, verse 5. It says, uh, Psalms 144, verse 5. Bow thy heavens, O Lord, and come down, touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. See? Okay. Sorry about that, but the camera position here. I'm trying to get a better spot next time. Um, okay, uh, next one will be Isaiah 64. Isaiah 64. And verse 1. It is oh that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou wouldest come down, at, uh, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence, as when thy melting fire burneth, the fire causes the waters to boil, to make the name known in thine adversaries, that the nations may tremble at thy presence, when those did tremble terrible things which we looked not for, thou comest down, the mountains flow down at thy presence. Well, well, God is God is. You know, reminding us that when he comes, you know, the, of his coming, you know, he wants us to be, you know, alert, awake. Uh, let me go back to my notes here. What's the next thing? Natural disasters. Uh, and January the 16th, we have a, uh, oh, this is just a prediction, but look. They're predicting, look what they're predicting here. Magnitude 9 earthquake will hit U.S., Canadian West Coast between February 21 and March 7, astrologers predict. Wow, that's just a prediction because they've been having a, a warnings down in that area. I think they even had a 6.6 .6 today. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, we'll check it out in a little bit in my, in my notes. Okay, go back to my notes here. Natural disasters. Uh, the next thing would be uh, smoke. Oh. On January the 18th, which was yesterday, see what happened on January the 18th. Check out this, man. It says, Mr. Lava Lover, smoke cloud surrounding Mayan volcano stuns local because it looks like the mythical couple said to have created the Philippines landmark. So they saw, they saw a sign in the... They saw a sign in the... You see, the story is that is that uh, 
she was they was in love with him and but she was I guess she was betrothed to somebody else or something like that I'm not sure and they fell in love and and uh, she left with him and and uh, I guess they they shot him with an arrow and while he was dying she killed herself you know and where they were buried this is the legend okay just a legend and you know but legends are are based on on, on something true they might have been you know uh, giants or uh, some other fallen angels or something, you know, I mean, uh, 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 not fallen angels, but uh, uh, the the hybrids of fallen angels mixed with humans, right? And uh, when they died, this volcano is, this was supposed to, it was, it's supposed to form. Well, when it was, uh, you know, it showed us a, a, a sign of the smoke, and look what it shows. Almost the same picture there, right? Wow. You see it? It's almost the same one. So there was signs in the smoke and made people think that it was actually these these two uh the spirit of those two uh matter ma ma uh uh, manifesting themselves or some sort of sign <laughs> to me it's to me it's is you better embrace your family and get out of there <laughs> that's what the sign is to me no but uh you know um yes the bible does tell us that there will be signs in the smoke you know i think in the bible it tells us there in the book of uh in joel and uh, chapter 2 and verse 30 it tells us there, right here in Joel chapter 30, chapter 2 verse 30, it says, And I will show wonders in the heaven and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke, as it is rendered in Acts chapter 2 verse 19, the same thing. In other words, there will be signs not only in the earth, but there will also be signs in the smoke. As there was there in, uh, I, I don't know if you recall there in, 19, in 1980, remember there was this sign when Mount St. Helen uh, erupted, remember that one? Uh, a lot of people call it the face of God on, it was a benchmark, um, you know, it was a, it, it was a, it was a benchmark. They say it was the face of God, you know, God showing us, you know, that we had hit a, a benchmark. You know, it's 2018, another one of those benchmarks. But um, let's go let, let's go back to that other sign. You know, why would God allow a sign for people to believe false gods? Well, the Bible tells us here that uh, in Deuteronomy, in chapter what 13, Deuteronomy chapter 13, it says there in, in verse one, it says, if there arises. It says, if there arises a, a dreamer of dreams and give thee a sign or a wonder, and and this is and and if that's and the sign or wonder come to pass, wherefore he spake of unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and and let us serve them. See, they they can make signs and wonders, you know, false gods or demons can make signs and wonders just for you to believe a false a false uh, religion. That those shall not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether you really love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. So what are you going to listen to? Are you going to listen to God's word or are you going to believe these false gods just because they showed a sign in the smoke? Okay, let's go back to my notes here. Uh, covering natural disasters. Okay, uh, on January the the 18th, there was another volcano, I think. Oh, yeah. It says, uh, Central America, Central American Colossus Tarialba Volcano is the third Costa Rican, Costa Rican volcano to rumble back to life. After mag 7.0 magnitude 7.0 7.8 quake last week in Honduras. Wow.
So we've been seeing volcanoes uh, starting to erupt. You know, and uh, let me go back to my to my notes here. Natural disasters, and then powerful, real powerful storms yesterday. Uh, it says right there, and uh, powerful. It says powerful gale lashes Europe, seven dead amid traffic chaos. Seven people died. Well, in the Netherlands, a powerful storm. Plummeted Europe with high winds and snow. I think the, the the it was measuring 87 miles per hour. Wow, that's hurricane winds. Thursday, killing at least seven people. In the three countries grounding fights, halting trains, ripping roofs off buildings, and flipping over trucks. Remember, you shall be visited by storm, by tempest. You know these these are horrible storms, right? And uh, you know, but the Bible does tell us there and. In the book of Psalms 107 verse verse 25 to 29 that he lifts us up these stor these stormy winds so that we can call upon him and the Bible does tell us there in Psalms 148 and uh, in verse 8 tells us well let me let me go let me go back to another another one of my um forgot here okay we read about that one right and uh, that happened yesterday on January 18th. Hmm. This is one I gotta let me see it. <laughs> Praise God. Okay. It was ripping off the. Uh, let me try it again. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not gonna let me see it again. I gotta subscribe. But um, uh, man. Yes, uh, it says a winter storm so bad it toppled trucks and blew uh, the roofs off the buildings. Let's go to another one. January the 18th. Winter weather deaths climb up to 16 as South cleans up the snow. See, so, let me see this one too. Okay. South awaits thaw from the snowstorm, icy roads, and numbing clo uh, cold. Right? It was bad down uh, down um, down in the south of, of America. Right? Um, let me let me go to another one. Winter storm, Igna, subsequent, sub, subsequent cold, snaps, kills at least 16 in the south. Wow, it kills 16 people. February wow. 7th, there was a big, big storm. You know, and uh, this one was pretty bad. Yes, uh, winter storm, I I uh, Igna, right? It covered uh, most of the south of the United States. And, uh, it killed 16 people. Wow. Uh, does the word of God tell us about that? Well, yeah. Again, let me go back to, to the to the word. Psalm 148 and verse 8 says, "Fire." It says fire and hell, snow and vapor, stormy wind, fulfilling. His word. Yeah, man, there's a lot of things happening right now, right? Man, it's crazy how things are going on. On January 18th, again yesterday, there was another car, another earthquake in uh, California. Uh, it says, earthquake 4.1, quake strikes north of Santa Rosa, California. A shallow magnitude 4.1 earthquake was reported Wednesday evening two miles from Castle Rock Springs, California, according to the U U.S. Geological Survey. Okay, it occurred around 9.55 p.m. Pacific time. And let me see, uh, I think I have another one here. Uh, 
and another one uh, 6.3 earthquake today I think 6.3 magnitude earthquake 6.3 magnitude earthquake strikes in the Gulf of California that was I think today and um, Gulf of California a preliminary, a preliminary magnitude 6.3 at earlier was reported as a 6.6, .6, but they downgraded. Uh, struck Friday morning in the Gulf of California, just west of Mexico, Sinaloa State. The offshore quake struck at 8:17 a.m. Pacific time. Okay, and let me go back see what else we can cover here. And uh, of course, there's a drought going on right now in Cape Town. Droughts in Cape Town could lead to a water shortage in the coming days. So yeah, we've been seeing natural disasters going on, right? And uh, what else? Let me see. Now let's go to uh, famines and pestilences. Okay. In my notes here. Famines, pestilences, plagues, epidemics, uh, 2018. Okay, we covered uh, Australian flu, right? And let's go to January the 14th, national flu outbreak leads to high mortality. So national, nationwide flu outbreak leads to high mortality rate and shortage of medication. Wow, that's going on right now. And let's go look at another picture, I mean another article, natural disasters. I mean, uh, not natural, just uh, epidemics, right? Famine, okay. And on um, January the 17th, marathon running, running mom, 10 year old boy among the latest flu victims. So, so it's not just because you're young or, or because you're old. It's, it's, it's killing people from every, from from a, this kind of flu is a strain that's stronger than the other ones and it's killing 10 year olds and you know real young people even a, a, a marathon runner you know I think last week it killed a 21 uh, power lifter 21 year old power lifter so uh, yeah a lot of things going on right let me see go, go to another one here on January 17 it says flu patients, patient spike caused Texas school district closure tents at California hospital. Wow, there's tents, you know, for uh, they don't want there's tents outside the, the hospitals. <laughs> What's that? Yep. A deadly flu epidemic sweeping the nation has triggered one Texas school district to cancel classes for the week, and one California hospital has set up a triage tent outside an emergency room for the flu patients, you know, to isolate the victims, right? Keep them quarantined. And uh, well, let me see, let me go to another one. This is a flu epidemic going on right now. Not only here, but also in Britain. Check it out. Flu epidemic. Whoa. Flu epidemic set to hit Britain within fortnight at 8.3 million now suffering symptoms. I mean, symptoms. While 8.3 million are suffering the, the symptoms right now While in England. Let me go back to my notes here. Flu widespread throughout the whole nation. 30 children dead. Wow. You can see that little tent there. This year, flu season ranks among the most severe 
it is the most severe uh, in recent years. It's covering 49 states. Wow. You know, does the Bible tell us about flu and epidemics and all that stuff? Well, the Bible warns us there in the book of uh, the book of Deuteronomy. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter what? 28. It tells us there. I think it's verse 58, 59, so on there. It says, If thou will not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in, the bo in this book, no man fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuance, and sore sicknesses, and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon all the diseases of Egypt, which thou was afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also every sickness and every plague which is not written in this book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. You know, because they did not hearken to hear God's word. Right? As it is written there in the book of, uh, in the book of Leviticus, chapter 26, in verse 21. It says there, And if you walk contrary unto me, it says, and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. You know, as it is written there in the book of, but, you know, you know, God promises to protect us, you know, from all these, these plagues, you know, with his seal. In Revelation chapter 9, it says right here, and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth. Neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their forehead. You know, if we're living in the end times, it's very important for you to have the seal of God. That's the truth. You know, sealed with God's truth, the spirit of truth, His word, His Holy Spirit. Okay? Uh, let me go back to God's word here. Uh, let me, and if, and if you are contacted with flu or the Bible tells us here in the book of uh, in the book of uh, First Kings, if you're contacted with any of these plagues or epidemics, you know the Bible tells us here that yeah, it says here in the book of First Kings in chapter eight and verse thirty-seven. It says. If there be in the land famine, if there be pestilence, blasting, mildew, locusts, or there be caterpillar, if their enemy besiege them in the land of their city, whatsoever plague, whatsoever sickness there be, what prayer and supplication soever be made by any man, or by all the people of Israel, which shall know every man the plague of, the, of his own heart, and sp spread forth his hands toward this house, then hear though in heaven, thy dwelling place and forgive and do to give to every man according to his ways whose heart thou knowest for thou even though only knowest the hearts of all children of men so all we all got to do is just call to God you know if it's if it's our time it's our time <laughs> you know but it God the good thing is that God knows your heart you know God knows your heart okay praise God that was uh, famines and pestilences you know and of course in California's it's being pretty bad right now. It's getting pretty bad over there in California too. Flu death counts. California count in California spikes. You know, state officials said that 32 people under the age of 65 have died last week of the flu, making it the deadliest week this season so far. In total, 74 people under the age of 65 have died of the flu season since. Of the flu since October, compared with 14 at the same time last year. Wow, so there's a lot, a lot, of, a lot of things going on. 
The thing, I, the next thing I want to cover is wars and rumors of wars. You know, we we've been having a lot of that too. So uh, we'll go to uh, January the 13th, right? Uh, last, what happened this week? Last Monday, I believe. Yeah, remember this? What happened last week? Hawaii missile alert, false alarm, warns residents of ballistic missile threat. <laughs> what happened there? Remember the Bible? Uh, you know, uh, was it really uh, an accident? Well, I don't. I don't think it was really an accident. Um, maybe they were trying to. They uh, they have this rhetoric, you know, innuendos about our president that uh, that he's a uh, that he's a uh, trigger happy or whatever, you know, and and I believe that they were trying to trying to lure him into doing a big mistake into starting a World War Three. Thank God we have a smart president, right? And that doesn't listen to that, and uh, thank God that uh, World War Three did not happen, right? It was a false alarm or could have been a false flag. Or some people even believe it, that our computer system was hacked. Strange because you know when I was in, I was raised uh, in church. They would tell us that that's how the world would end by somebody making a mistake like this one, and uh, it would trigger a nuclear war. You know, and uh, pretty much you know uh, something. It, it would take something major to happen in order for the new to initiate a new world order. You know, if World War Three happens, you know, there's nuclear bombs flowing everywhere. You know, uh, there will be a Jesus show up, but not the real Jesus. It's going to be false Jesus. And people are going to believe it's Jesus bringing peace to the world, but it's Satan. You know, and it also can initiate a new world order. You know, uh, people, uh, the the world uh, could be so devastated and countries so, so vulnerable that that the nation would have to, have to unite. To create a new world order, so um, I don't know what was the intention of this false, false alarm, but it is a symbol of, of when Satan will come as a false alarm. Satan is that false alarm, okay? Praise God. All right. Uh, does the Bible tell us about? Uh, oh yeah, uh, Matthew twenty-four and verse six again. It tells us again in Matthew twenty-four. Let me read that again. Matthew 24 and verse 6, it tells us. It says, And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. It says, But be not troubled, right? Be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. So as long as we hear wars and rumors of, of wars, you know, that, that that's not when Jesus is going to come. Jesus is going to come when there's peace. The new world order, saying this here, saying he's Jesus. You know, that's when that's when the true Jesus will show up. You know, praise God. Uh, okay. Let me go back to my notes here on wars and war, rumors of wars. And that scared a lot of people over there in, in Hawaii, right? And the next thing uh, I saw here, Russian four minister, four minister berates U.S. for destabilizing the world, you know, causing chaos. And that's what they do to, in order to bring order. They, they have to bring chaos first because world, uh, order out of chaos is their model, right? And that is Russia, right? You know, but be not be not alarmed because, you know, the Bible tells us here. Let me let me go right quick, real quick, real quick, about a little lesson on that on 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 Russia. In Daniel chapter seven and verse five, and tells us, and behold, another beast, a second like a bear. That's that's uh, Russia, and it raised up itself on its side, and it had three ribs in its mouth. In other words. It attacked three of its own sister nations because ribs represents of their own flesh. Remember uh, Adam and Eve in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it, that they said unto it, arise and devour much flesh. What we have here is kings of the earth forming a new world order and the bear uh, raising up itself on the side with three ribs on the mouth. That's the that's a form of a of a wound, a fatal wound. But look, it lifts up and it raises itself up. 
into into a, a totally different animal, a totally different beast, which says that rise and devour much flesh. And, uh, when Russia attacks first, that is the battle of Hemingog. That's when Jesus Christ is going to show up. No, you know it's going to it's going to be the Antichrist showing up. Because it says right here, I rise and devour my flesh. That commandment is given to Satan and his angels when they form their new world order or when they heal the new world order. Really. It says right here in the book of, uh, and yeah, let me go back to Revelation chapter 17. Remember, devour my flesh. That commandment was given to, to the to the to the, the ten angels or to the ten horns, and the ten horns were those are, are ten kings, ten fallen angels, which have received no kingdom as yet because they come with Satan, but receive power as kings over one hour with the beast, the hour of temptation. And what do they do? Well, it tells us right here in verse 17. It says, For God has put in their heart to fulfill the will. Well, I mean, in verse 16, and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast. These shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat, devour her flesh. So when it says devour her flesh there in Daniel, we're talking about Satan and his angels. Uh, you know, when that fatal wound is healed by Satan and his angels, okay? Praise God. And uh, make no mistake, Satan comes first. Well, what about the battle of Hemingog or the battle of Magog? Well, again, yeah, let me go there a little bit, maybe... I'll just spend a little man, uh, some minutes there, a little few minutes, if God willing. Ezekiel, what, 38? Uh, verse 36. Let's start with, oh, well, yeah, we can start there in verse uh, 5. Persia, that's Iran, Ethiopia, Libya, with them all, all of them with shield and helmets. Well, well, up here is where it mentions, uh, Son of man, set thy face against Magog in the land of Magog, uh, Gog and Magog, uh, in the land of Magog, the chief prince. That's where we get the word Rush, which uh, a lot of scholars believe it's Russia. I myself believe it is too. You know, and uh, it starts mentioning the, 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 the groups or the nations that will align with it. Persia, Ethiopia, Libya with them all, all of them with the shield and helmet. Gomer is, of course, Turkey. You know, uh, I agree with my brother uh, Mark, uh, Sam from Mark 13 Records uh, that Turkey is Gomer and all his bands, the House of Togorma, because there are many people, and believe it or not, but there are people in Turkey that believe they are the House of Togorma of the North Quarters and all of his bands and many people with thee. It says, Be, be, be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, though and all the company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. Right now they're preparing. Right now is that preparation, but remember, Satan comes first. You know, this battle right here, this battle of Magog happens when Satan is already here. It says, Be thou prepared and, be, and prepare for thyself, though, and all the company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. Okay? Uh, verse 8 After many days, see, after many days, this is when Satan's already here. I'll prove it to you. It says, in the latter years, those shall come into the land that is brought back from the sword and is gathered out of many nations. What nation is gathered of all nations? There's only one. That's the United States. Against the mountains of Israel. And guess where all the tribes of Israel are at? Right here in the United States, you can find all the tribes of Israel, which have always waste, but is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. All right, are we doing it safely right now? Are we are we in war? Uh, there's wars and rumors of wars. Yes. So when are we gonna do it safely? This is a false safely. This is a false security. In other words, Satan is here with his with his false new world order. So that's when gay, the battle of Haman Gog and Magog happen, and it will initiate the coming of Jesus. So don't be fooled that we have a scrimmage with or a, a war. It's, we start war with Russia or Iran or whatever. That is the that is the battle. Haman Gog. No, you know the first one initiates the coming of Satan. The second one, this one, the may the real one, the not the anti one, but the real one. This one initiates the coming of Jesus. You know, and and they and they will attack. Says right here, and those shall ascend, come like a storm. Those shall be like a cloud over. Uh, to cover the land, though, and all thy bands of, of many people with thee. 
Thus says the Lord, it shall come to pass that at the same time it shall the things come into thy mind, and thou shalt think an evil thought. What is that thought he's gonna think? And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. You see? You see, even if Donald Trump if we do build those walls, uh, you know, Satan is probably gonna bring them down. <laughs> and I will go to them that are at rest, see, at rest, peaceful. Right now we're not at peace. That happens when the Antichrist is here, that dwells safely. It's talking about a new, unique time in our future. All of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. Open borders. <laughs> Praise God. Okay. So, let's go to... Uh, uh, yes. Op um, let, me, let me show you another scripture here, okay? Oh, Revelation. It talks about a future... Time and history where there's not gonna, where there's going to be peace on this earth, a uh, fake peace. Look at Revelation six four. And there went out another horse, a red horse, meaning blood red, and power was given to him that sat there on to take the peace from the earth. In other words, world peace. It's talking about a time in the future when there will be world peace, and this world peace will be taken away. In other words, the fatal wound, and they should. And they, we have never have had world peace. You know, Revelation 6, 4, a lot of people say, well, we've always had war. Yeah, but we've never had world peace. And here's talking about a place and time where we're going to have a, a peace on the earth. And that peace on the earth will be taken away. And they should kill one another. And there was given to him a great sword. So, so that's what it's talking about there. Okay, so don't be deceived. You know, uh, if we get in a battle with Russia or somebody, don't don't believe that first Jesus that shows up. It is actually Satan imitating the coming of Christ. Okay, all right. Uh, and when Satan is here, of course, you know, uh, you, they will attack the United States. You know, and uh, that's when the true Jesus shows up. Okay, back to wars and rumors of wars. And here we have um, again January twenty fifteen. Uh, so, uh, uh, Erdogan accuses U.S. of planning, planning to form terror army in Syria. Then we have Erdogan from the Turkey, Gomer again, right? Preparing itself. Okay, let me go back to uh, my notes here. And uh, of course, this happened on January 16th. U.S. withholds 65 million from the U.N. Relief Agency for Palestinians, and they're kind of they're kind of mad about that. You know, what's interesting about this is that you know notice how the U.S. has power over the U.N. In other words, it does not it does according to its will, and none st stands against it. Or, or, or none is powerful enough to go against it. In other words, the U.S. is the superpower of the end times. You know, and uh, of course, Palestinians are allies with Iran, a Shiite nation. You know, uh, the ones that control Palestine or Palestinians right now are Hamas. You know, and they're Shiite. You know, of course, it goes back to where the Bible tells us there in Jeremiah 6.14, where it says that... Uh, where it says they, they, they shall, and uh, let me go on, Jeremiah 6, right here, right quick, to Jeremiah 6, and 14. Oh. It says, they have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people, slightly saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. You know, they're trying to bring this Palestinian state, you know, and, uh, it's not going to happen because the only one that can truly bring peace, truly bring peace, is Christ. You know, of course, Satan will bring his false peace. You know, and uh, and let me talk a little bit about. Well, I think it's almost time to 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 finish, right? And um, I'm going to go ahead and go to my notes again because it's almost time to to finish here. Okay. Uh, Tillerson, let me see. Tillerson vows U.S. forces will stay 
in Syria to counter Iran. There we go against Iran. Iran's in the target. So is Assad. You know, they want to bring Assad down. You know, we know that Assad, he predicts the Christians, but, you know, from being beheaded from the the Islamic extremists that are there that uh, that United States was funding. I don't know we're still funding them, but I still remain skeptical. You know, President Trump said he wasn't going to fund them anymore, but uh, I know we have U.S. troops over there. But if we get rid of, uh, you know, Assad, hopefully uh, we can take over and uh, protect those Christians over there because Syria is made up of a lot of Christians. Remember, that's where Post of Paul, uh, he, he, he converted into Syria, right? And matter of fact, close to Damascus, right? And uh, let me just say a little scriptures on, on Syria. Okay, uh, let's turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter 17. I'm going to try to go fast because I don't have that much time left. I think uh, Isaiah, chapter 17. I didn't. I really didn't time myself. But uh, I think Isaiah, where is it at? Isaiah 17. Last time I didn't time myself and the video was real long. <laughs> 17 verse 1, it says, The burden of Damascus, behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city. And it shall be a ruinous heap. You know, Damascus has been a city for a long time. But one day, God promises it's not going to be a city anymore. You know, what else does God tell? Well, here's a lesson here in First Kings, in chapter 11. That who's going who's gonna to be uh, enemies of, uh, okay, let me go, of Israel. First Kings 11. In verse 14, it says there in 11, 14. And the Lord stirred up an adversary unto Solomon, Hadad the Edomite, Russia. And Russia has always been, you know, um, behind the scenes. Edomite meaning the red nation, Esau. He, uh, he was the king of Seed in, in Edom. You know, so ever since then, you know, Edom has been against Israel. And Jacob and Esau, right? The battle of Jacob and Esau continues. Okay, uh, let's go to verse 25. Another adversary will be here in, uh, in, in verse 25. says right there, whoa. It says, and he was an adversary to Israel. All, in other words, uh, the Damascus, and reign in Damascus, you know, that uh, Azoba, the, the king of uh well, let me read. And he was an adversary to Israel all the days of Solomon, besides the mission of Hadad did. And he abhorred Israel and reigned over Syria. So Israel has had two two allies, which is, uh, I mean, two uh, adversaries. It's been Russia and Syria. And what is Russia doing in Syria? Well, I don't know. There might be a conspiracy to try to lure Israel you know, in, in uh, into uh, into Syria, and I believe Israel is already in there. Um, let me see Isaiah chapter seven. I think we're just gonna finish with these because uh, I don't think I have enough time. It's Isaiah chapter seven, verse one. It says, "And it came to pass. It came to pass that Ahaz the son of jo uh, Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, that risen the king of Syria." And Pekah, the son of Remaliah, king of Israel, went up toward Jerusalem to war against it, but could not prevail against it. So they both went against Israel. <laughs> I mean, against uh, Jerusalem, Judah. And it was told the house of David, Syria is confederate with Ephraim. And Ephraim, you know, that, that, uh, that's Britain. And it also symbolizes the United States because the United States came out of Britain, right? And uh, so there we see a conspiracy to try to lose real in Jerusalem or or uh, in this war Judah and of course we see do we do see Judah Ephraim and Edom and Syria right now and it says and his heart was moved in the heart of his people the trees of the wood are moved with the wind so there we see all three in in, uh, in Syria you know in uh, in the Bible says here in verse 17 uh, and 18 it says and the Lord shall bring upon thee and upon the people and upon the father's house the days that have not come 
from the day of Ephraim departed from Judah, even the king of Assyria, that's Satan, that's the Antichrist, and they shall come and, and, and pass that day that the Lord shall hiss, that's the snake, the Antichrist, for the fly that is in the uttermost parts of the rivers of Egypt, and for the bee that is in the land of Assyria. Okay, uh, let me go to Isaiah. Let me go one more. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 7, I mean chapter 9. And we're about to wrap things up here. Isaiah chapter 9. Okay, Isaiah in chapter 9. I was already in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 12. It says, therefore the Lord, oh, verse 11, it says, therefore the Lord shall set up adversaries of risen against him. That's the king of uh, Syria. And, uh, you know, the king of Syria right now is Assad. And, and uh, ironically, he has a lot of people against him. <laughs> and uh, also, um, here it says, the Syrians before, the, palace, the Philistines behind. How, how crazy how the Syrians are aligned with the Palestinians, right? And Iran, the Syrians before the Palestinians behind, they shall devour Israel with open mouth. For all this, anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. In other words, God's hand is still stretched out. And uh, while, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, that's a tremendous verse right there, right? Okay, so I think that will do it for today.